What's up guys and gals? Let's talk about the stock market and some stocks that I think are doing really good. We're gonna talk about the, uh, where's the stock market at? There's been a little bit of a pullback and it, it's nothing to be afraid of, okay? In front of you, you see uh, two stocks that I'm continuing to hold on your left, ARLP, and on your right, VTGN. Now, let me pull up, um, first of all, ARLP, and I'm gonna tell you why this stock is still a great stock to behold, and I'm gonna tell you the reason why. Now here you can see that about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days ago, seven trading days ago, yeah, one, two, three, yeah, seven trading days ago, you can see a high there of $7.40 in the upper right-hand corner. Now since then, it's pulled back. If you didn't watch my video a few days, a few videos ago, I talked about the fact that this was going to pull back for probably a week and a half, two weeks. Okay, maybe even a little bit longer. All right, and that's to be expected. Well, sure enough, here it is. How did I know that? Ugh. Momentum, baby, momentum. Look down there at the bottom right. You see two technical um, indicators. The very, very bottom one there is called Stochastic Momentum in Index. Okay, the one above that's called a Big Daddy Forecast. Um, it's basically the same as that Big Daddy Forecast is a, is a, um, a technical um, study that I put together myself. But you can find basically the same thing on the TD Ameritrade platform, the TOS platform, which is what, what is uh, the trading platform you're looking at here. They have a thing called, uh, I think it's called Forecaster or Forecaster or something like that. Okay. So if you don't have an account with them, uh, maybe hit me up in the chat of the video and I'll give you the mathematical uh, equation and all the mathematics behind this uh, technical indicator. It's very good. <coughs> okay, excuse me. So this stock is pulling back and guess what? If this thing gets down to about $6.40, I'm going to pick up some more shares. So I talked about this in a previous video. So by the way, if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, now is the time to do it. Click that subscribe button. Make sure you click the little notification bell. Give me a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Now, why do I say if it gets down to 6, 640 is a good time to pick up some shares? Because it's not going to stay down there, guys. And in a little bit, I'm going to tell you why this ARLP coal stock, which is part of the oil and um, oil... Uh, oil and coal uh, sector, okay? It, it, and I'll tell you a little bit why this stock is something you want to be holding. You can see clearly in the last, uh, what, 10 trading days, about 10 trading days ago, this thing had a massive breakout to the upside, yeah? This stock is absolutely humming. So I would wait a little bit. Now I'll put out a video uh, when I think it's a good time to buy back into this. I wouldn't buy yet because the price is still going to go down for a while. Okay, so we're going to carefully watch the forecaster and the momentum and some other things that I watch to help me determine when's a good time to, to pick up some more shares. So I own 5,000 shares of ARLP. I'm a big time on this stock, thousands of dollars. It's already pulled back. So, of course, my profits come down a little bit, but it's still really good. And... If you haven't watched my previous videos about this stock, this thing's going to go to $15, $18, $20, maybe higher. Okay? It might take a few weeks, months, years even for it to do that, but it doesn't matter. It's going to do it. So we don't want to jump into this. If you're, if you're looking to buy shares of this stock or you want to add to your existing position, don't do it yet. Okay? Because you look at the bottom right there, you can see momentum is still going down, right? So momentum, momentum can come down and kind of hang around down there for a while or it could come right back up. We'll have to wait and see, okay? So this is a great stock. The timing right now to buy more shares is not, not the best time. Now, there, there are some other techniques you, you can do. You could accumulate like a few shares on the way down and then kind of when you, when you see it bouncing back a little bit, then you can really kind of pick up more shares. Some people do it that way, okay? I prefer to wait a little bit because I can tell this stock's probably not going to bounce back just yet. Okay, let's take a look at, and I'll talk in a little bit why I think this stock, I'm going to show you why this stock and other stocks in the oil and coal sector are really the stocks to be holding. I'm going to show you that in a little bit here, okay? 
let's go look over at um, VTGN first. Now this is a biomedical stock, okay? Vistagen, and look at that! Look at that stock! Oh my goodness! Look at the channel! I talked about this before. This stock pulled back. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six days ago, it started its pullback. The three red candlesticks there on the upper right. But and and the stock market's been pulling back. The stock market's down close to a hundred dollars. S and P five hundred, I think, over the last like week. Okay, but not this stock. <laughs> this stock is is doing so well. It's just absolutely didn't even barely respond to the pullback in the stock market. Okay? So that tells you a lot. When you see a stock going against what the stock market's doing as a whole, yeah, that's a sign. That's a sign right there. This stock is strong, okay? Now, I see today is Friday. Um the last candlestick there Friday with that kind of um almost a doji looking candlestick. So that's that kind of candlestick kind of looks like a little bit of an evening star. We call those an evening star. Well, we won't know whether it's an evening star until going into uh, Monday and Tuesday next week. We have to see the, the candlesticks that, that, that follow behind it, okay, or come after it. So we'll wait to see. But that candlestick looks a little bit like a little bit like a shooting star kind of candlestick. That usually indicates kind of a peak, but it may not. Now the big daddy forecaster is showing that the that the uh, the price is expected to go down. And momentum is beginning to wane here a little bit on this stock. Okay. So it, it may pull back. It may. You'll see I wrote, uh, I put in there a, a two red lines, diagonal red lines. So this thing continues to trade in that channel, an upward channel. The white line there is the 50-day moving average. This thing is trading so, so far above the 50-day moving average. It's crazy. Okay. It's just banging. This stock is banging. Um, I only hold a small position like 200 shares. Okay. But... If you're looking, this this stock's a little bit more risky than than the uh, ARLP. ARLP is a little bit more certain. Talked about that before, but this stock uh, is so cheap at 289, guys and gals, that even if you you know, even though I feel it's a little bit more risky because it's biomedical, and you know, um, that sector is it's kind of doing okay. It's not doing great, but it's doing okay. Um, but this this stock, I just have. Uh, looking at the news about their they uh, phase three of their depression drugs that the FDA is approved for them to do phase three. Okay, that's why you see that big run up back in like the middle of May, kind of middle to late May. You see how it ran up really strong there. That's because uh, shareholders, when the news came out, they're like, "Oh heck yeah, they jumped in on this stock." Okay. So if this stock gets up to uh, above five dollars, guys and gals, then you're going to see the big funds, some of the bigger funds, or at least some funds are going to jump in. Hedge funds and even other funds are going to jump in on this. Okay, they, some of them, like I said before, they have rules in their own fund that tell them they can't buy any stocks below five bucks. So if this thing gets above five bucks, watch out. So this this stock I'm going to hold. I was going to sell it for a small profit, but now that I'm looking at it. The last few days, and the fact it barely even pulled back, um, yeah, I'm gonna hold this up. I might accumulate more shares, but uh, I might just keep that small position and just let it ride. I don't know. I'm gonna. I'm not sure yet, but I like this stock. I, I think it's worth picking up at least a small position on. So if that's something you're interested in, go for it. Remember, guys and gals, I don't give financial advice. I just share with you what I'm doing. Make your own decisions. But I like this stock. Okay. Okay. Let's look at. Let's look at what I call the inflation watch. So here you, here you are. You've got, or I should say, here you go. You've got uh, four different symbols in front of you here. The upper left is CL. That's a futures contract, a futures product. That's um, crude oil. Okay, that's what CL stands for. Okay, in the TOS platform, TD Ameritrade, you put a slash in front of futures. That's why you see a slash in front of it. So any futures or commodities, you're going to see a slash. Okay, so that's crude oil up there. Now, about three days ago, the, the recent high was $72.99. Today it closed somewhere around $71. Okay, so it's only down like two bucks, a little less than two dollars. Okay, so we're, we're going to come back to, to, to uh, crude oil here in a moment because I want to show you something about crude oil in the oil and coal sector. And I'm going to show you why that ARLP stock is the one you want to be in on, okay? Okay, the next one to the right of coal is S&P 500. That's what ES stands for. For those that don't know, that's S&P 500 futures. Okay, today it closed approximately for, uh, 4141. 
and the, the all-time high, as you can see on the screen there, is 4258 and a quarter, okay? So this thing is trading, you know, whatever. It looks like the stock market's come down about 110, uh, what do we got there? Uh, 51 would be, uh, 50, uh, sorry, 58 would be 100, mm, 48 is 110, I guess we're looking at, what, $119, somewhere down there like that. Okay, my math is hopefully right there, somewhere like that. Okay, $117 looks like something like this, right? So the stock market's come down $117. All right, that's nothing. That's a little puny, little, a little drop in the bucket. Okay, I'm, I'm not even the least bit concerned about stock market coming down $100 or even $200 or even $300. I, I, don't, I don't think it means anything. It's just cycles. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Um, and you know what, guys and gals, stock market coming down isn't necessarily a bad thing. Okay, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay, the next one to the right, XME. This is the steel and iron ore uh, ETF. You can see today it closed at $41.31. It's down about $6 and change, $6.50, somewhere around there. Okay. And, um, and for those that don't know, the ARLP stock, which is coal, coal is used to burn and light the furnaces that make the steel and iron ore, okay? So you can see, if you just look at that chart there for XME, my goodness, look at that thing. It's like vertical. It went from $20 back in October of 2020, or even back in July, it was, it was down at $20, July 2020. It's been a rocket ship ever since. Look at that thing. It is now up over 40 bucks. It's doubled. Doubled its price. And... Less than a year. So coal is burning those furnaces, and that's a good thing for AR, ARLP stock and other stocks in the coal, in the oil and coal sector, okay? If you don't know by now, I keep mentioning sectors. I trade based on strong sectors. I don't just trade stocks. I find the best, strong sec, strongest sectors, and I trade try to trade the best stocks in those sectors, okay? If you haven't watched my video from before about sectors, look in the description of this video, You'll see a link there for that video, okay? Okay, the last one on the right is corn. Those are corn uh, commodity or corn futures, okay? And um, you can see today it closed at six fifty-seven and seventy-five cents. Uh, recent highs have been about seven hundred and ten dollars, so it's it's down, you know, quite a bit there. Um, let's see, if we just is it forty? Yeah, fifty bucks, fifty-three dollars somewhere around there, down fifty-three bucks since uh looks like uh, the last few weeks okay so we're, we're seeing it we, hopefully you're seeing a, a very common trend here right and all these commodities these futures that we're looking at here what, what's the common trend everything's coming down right let's let's take a look back at the s p 500 es i want you to look at the bottom there you'll see that's the stochastic momentum so es find that on your screen if you have to pause it fine pause the video Okay, it's about the middle of the screen. At the top, you see ES, the S&P 500. I'll look all the way down at the bottom. You see like a bluish line. The line goes up and down and up and down. That's stochastic momentum index, okay? Where's the momentum? Well, that momentum's almost at the bottom, right? It even says, it even says it's down right near a negative 11. Okay? Now, staying with that exact uh, stochastic momentum index, just look to the right of that. You'll see for XME. Look where that one is. It, too, is below that red line. Momentum's near the bottom, right? And if you look to the right for corn, the same indicator, you can see corn's down there. The momentum is down at the bottom for that one, too. So those three, S&P 500, steel and iron ore, and corn, part of my inflation watch, they all have low momentum. The momentum's near the bottom. And they still got a little ways to go. They're not done yet. But now go all the way back to the left, and I know I'm sorry that stochastic momentum is a little bit different on the on the uh, um, on CL, the far left there, for crude oil. Look at its momentum, guys and gals. Where is it at? Is it at the bottom? No, sir. No, sir. Momentum is, at the, is near the top, like right around 40 or 50. Right? It's nowhere near the bottom. What does that tell you? That tells you tells you that the the oil and coal sector is much stronger than every other sector in the stock market by far it's not even close 
this is really important to understand this, that the, that the energy sector, or in this case, we can talk about oil and coal, it lags behind everything else. So when everything else starts to come down, oil and coal or the energy sector takes longer to respond. That just goes to tell you how strong it is. Okay, you want to be buying your stocks in the, in the oil and coal sector or energy sector. Okay, the momentum alone tells you that. Okay, again, if you didn't watch my video uh, a few days back or a couple videos ago about the sector's strength, go watch it. You're going to clearly see that the energy sector is the number one sector. Not even close. Okay, not even close. Dominating everything else. All right. So that's why I say if you're going to if you're going to trade stocks, guys and gals, you got to be in the right sector. Okay, you got to be looking at the strongest sectors. Okay, don't just haphazardly haphazardly buy stocks and hope it works out or even if you're looking at technical data and looking at the news and looking at their finances that's all good go ahead and do that okay but that's not where you start you first start with the strongest sectors and then go find the strongest stocks in those sectors okay now i know i know in the previous video when i talked about sectors i said i was going to put out a video about how to pick the strongest sectors or the strongest stocks in those sectors in the strong sectors but i haven't done that yet i'm still kind of thinking that one through because uh like i said before it's not a five minute video that's going to take some thought Okay, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, and stay tuned to this YouTube channel. Okay, make sure you subscribe because I put out the the, uh, the 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 videos from time to time. I don't always do them every day, but I try to do them often. Okay, on the ARLP stock and even on the VTGN, just wait for that. Look at the VTGN, as a matter of fact, on the screen. Let me put that back up. The the uh, two stocks, the ARLP and VT. Look at VTGN. Look what the momentum is way at the top. <laughs> this thing is so strong it's amazing okay but for ARLP you know don't jump in yet if you're looking to pick up more shares wait for the momentum to come down if you're looking to jump in for the first time then still wait for it to come down okay so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to wait for this thing to dip down and then when I see momentum's down there and I get a sense that it's going to have a little uptick and there's going to be momentum returning bang I might accumulate a little bit near the bottom and pick up a few more shares, you know, because it's hard to time the, the bottom perfectly, guys and gals. You don't want to do that. You want to just accumulate near the bottom and keep an eye on it and pick on a few shares, you know, five shares, 10 shares, 50 shares, whatever it is, okay? And then as you start seeing your rebound, you pour it on, okay? That's how you do it. That's how you. That's how smart traders do it, okay? So we want to buy stocks where the big funds are putting their money. That's the whole point of looking at sectors first. Wherever the big funds put their money, that's where you want to be. Okay, hope you enjoyed the video. We'll talk to you real soon next time.